Welcome to the celebration of Mass for the 28th Sunday in Ordinary Time from Assumption Church in River North, Chicago. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. O oh, my soul, praise him, for he is your health and salvation. Come all who hear, now to his altar draw near, joining in glad adoration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. And with your spirit. In today's gospel, Jesus meets an earnest young man who has a hard time letting go of something in order to get something better. As we gather for Mass today, let's pause and let go of the stuff that's kind of rattling around in our brains and things that are distracting us so that we can truly be formed by Jesus' word today. Lord Jesus, you look upon us with love. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, in you we find wisdom and strength. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have the words of everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. May your grace, O Lord, we pray, at all times go before us and follow after us and make us always determined to carry out good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. I prayed and prudence was given me. I pleaded and the spirit of wisdom came to me. I preferred her to scepter and throne, and deemed riches nothing in comparison with her. Nor did I liken any priceless gem to her, because all gold, in view of her, is a little sand, and before her, silver is to be accounted mire. Beyond health and comeliness, I loved her, and I chose to have her rather than the light, because the splendor of her never yields to sleep. Yet all good things together came to me in her company, and countless riches at her hands. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Fill us with your love, O Lord, and we will sing for joy. Teach us to number our days aright, that we may gain wisdom of heart. Return, O Lord, how long? Have pity on your servants. Fill us with your love, O Lord, and we will sing for joy. Fill us at daybreak with your kindness, that we may shout for joy and gladness all our days. Make us glad for the days when you afflicted us, for the years when we saw evil. Fill us with your love, O Lord, and we will sing for joy. Let your work be seen by your servants and your glory by their children. And may the gracious care of the Lord our God be ours. Prosper the work of our hands for us. Prosper the work of our hands. Fill us with your love, O Lord, and we will sing for joy. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, indeed, the word of God is living and effective, sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating even between soul and spirit, joints and marrow, and able to discern reflections and thoughts of the heart. No creature is concealed from him but everything is naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must render an account. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran up, knelt down before him, and asked, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus answered him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not kill, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not defraud, honor your father and your mother. He replied and said to him, Teacher, all of these I have observed from my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to him, You are lacking in one thing. Go sell what you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. At that statement, his face fell, and he went away sad, for he had many possessions. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it is for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were amazed at his words. So Jesus again said to them in reply, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for one who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were exceedingly astonished 
and said among themselves, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For human beings it is impossible, but not for God. All things are possible for God. Peter began to say to him, Well, we have given up everything and followed you. Jesus said, Amen, I say to you, there is no one who has given up house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or lands for my sake and for the sake of the gospel who will not receive a hundred times more now in this present age houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and eternal life in the age to come. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. There are some things that seem odd and mysterious at first that can actually be explained pretty easily. For example, this weekend in Chicago, we have the Bank of America Chicago Marathon. And the marathon route is 26.2 miles. Now, why 26.2? Wouldn't 25 be a more obvious length? Well, interestingly enough, at the Olympics of 1896, it was 25 miles. And that was not only a nice round number, but it was the exact distance between downtown London and downtown Windsor, 25 miles. But then it changed in 1908 because the British royal family wanted the privilege of seeing the conclusion of the marathon. And we wouldn't want the royal family to be inconvenienced in any way. So from downtown Windsor to the front lawn of Windsor Castle, it was an additional one mile and 385 feet. And so that the royal family can view the end of the marathon from their front lawn, the marathon was extended 1.2 miles. So if any of you are running the marathon this weekend and that last mile begins to get really rough, remember to say thank you to the royal family for your pain and your exhaustion. But, you know, other things are not so easy to explain. For example, in our gospel today, this rich man rushes up to Jesus and asks, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus ticks off the commandments and he says, oh, I have observed all these since my youth. Now, maybe it's a slight exaggeration, but Basically, he's a good guy, and he's actually looking to do more. And so Jesus looks at him and says, well, there is one more thing you can do. Sell what you have and give to the poor, and you'll have treasure in heaven, and come follow me. And then the next sentence is really interesting. It says, he went away sad because he had many possessions. Now, why would having many possessions make us sad? Isn't that what we're working for? Isn't that what we're saving for? Isn't that what we're investing for? You know, it's kind of like saying he just won the lottery and he went away sad because now he has a lot of money. Doesn't seem to make any sense. Why would that make you sad? It made him sad because he knew he had turned down a better offer. It made him sad because he suddenly realized that possessions ran his life, and he was not really free to let go of them. What was supposed to bring him security had actually imprisoned him. And he would not have asked that question of Jesus, what more can I do, if he didn't sense deep down that he was missing something, that somehow simply keeping the rules following the law was fine as far as it went. But there had to be something more to that. Something was missing. 
He was hungry for something more. And his sadness came from the fact that he chose not to satisfy that hunger. He couldn't, he couldn't let go of what he had in order to receive what God was offering him. The scripture says Jesus looked on him with love, saw that he had a potential to do great things for the kingdom of God, to go beyond the Ten Commandments to what amounts the two great commandments, love of God and love of neighbor. But he just couldn't let go. There's a famous painting of Jesus and the rich young man by an artist by the name of Hoffman. We actually have a reproduction of it in our, in our rectory. But the original painting is in the Riverside Church in Manhattan. And it shows Jesus standing at the corner of this building with the rich man at his left. And around the corner of the building, out of sight of the rich man, or the poor and the blind and the lame. And in the painting, Jesus is gesturing, sort of pointing around the corner, inviting the rich man to take a look to what was at his right. And Jesus is in the middle. Jesus is the way to a new and richer life. But the rich man instead is looking the other direction. He refuses to see what Jesus invites him to see. He refuses to see the way out of his sadness, his emptiness, his obsession with things that ultimately will all pass away. He refused to see the way out of his lonely isolation. He refused to see the way to become truly enmeshed in the human community and become part of a, a new family of followers of Jesus with all kinds of brothers and sisters and mothers and fathers. He turns away from Jesus. And whenever we turn away from Jesus, it makes us sad, no matter how much of everything else we actually have. And all of that, I think, helps explain the second part of the gospel where Jesus turns to his disciples and says, how hard it is for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the apostles are shocked at this because for many people in Jesus' time, wealth was a sign of, of God's blessing. You know, the patriarchs, Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, they were all wealthy people. And so he says again, children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for one who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. Now, I think his point here is not the poor are always more virtuous than the rich. That only is true on television. The problem is that wealth brings a sense of independence, a sense of privilege, and often the illusion that we don't really need others, that I can be disconnected from the larger human family. And I think that's present even in the rich man's question. What must I do to inherit eternal life? Say, I'm going to do something to accomplish this on my own. But notice the question, again, doesn't make a lot of sense. We don't earn an inheritance, we receive it. And if our hands are full already, we can't receive it, right? We might earn a salary, but we never earn an inheritance. We have to receive it. And notice Jesus addresses the apostles as children. They're clearly not children. But that's a reference to last week's gospel that happened just before this encounter that we read about today, where the apostles were trying to keep the children away from Jesus. And Jesus says to them, let the children come, that whoever does not accept the kingdom like a child will not enter it. See, children recognize their dependence 
They don't count on their own earnings. They don't count on their own possessions. They don't count on their own achievements. They're open to what they can be given. And even the apostles with their torn nets and their leaky boats would hardly be considered wealthy. But even they realize, well, gee, we can't jam a camel through the eye of a needle. No matter how small you get, you can't do that. But the point was that Jesus was trying to make is that I can. With God, all things are possible. Let me show you the way. Let me be the way. Don't look away. Look what just around the corner, enjoying the rest of humanity. Sell what you have, give to the poor, and come follow me. Be part of my community. And so we might today stop and ask ourselves, how often might Jesus have looked at you and me lovingly, seen the goodness in us, and seen the desire within us for more and to do more, and this desire to, to be a true follower of His and, and find a deeper riches in life? How often has He looked at us with love and asked us to let go of something that we have that we're holding on to. Maybe it was a habit of sin. You know, a few moments of pleasure leads to hours of sadness and regret and denial. How often has He looked on us with love and invited us to get rid of that sadness? Has Jesus looked upon us and asked us to let go of the greed? that isolates us behind this wall of sadness. All the stuff that could be wiped away at a heartbeat. Yeah. Look for things that can't be wiped away. How often has Jesus looked upon us with love and let go of our obsession with our career, our progression in, in, in our chosen profession? We're focusing so much on getting ahead now that we have no time for family or loved ones. How often has He told us, you can't get that joy back again. The years disappear. How often has Jesus looked upon us with love and asked us to let go of a relationship that was unhealthy, that was leading us away from Him? How has He tried to tell us, let go of it? You can do better. How often has Jesus looked upon us with love and asked us to let go of an addiction, something that's gobbling up more and more of our life and told us there's help out there. Go seek it. How often has Jesus looked on you and me with love and invited us to let go of some of our time, give God more than an hour each week, your skills and your experience and, 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 and your understanding of things could, could benefit so many other people and, you, and, and you'd get great joy out of helping others. How often has Jesus looked upon us with love and, and asked us to let go of our anger and our resentment and our bitterness, things that are keeping us locked into the past and keeping us from being alive in the present? How often has Jesus looked upon us with love and asked us to let go of our busyness? All the things we do that keep us from asking the question, Lord, what do you want me to do with my life? You see, Jesus is always here. He's here to lead us from sadness and to joy. And it's whatever we cannot bear releasing is what holds us in the grip of sadness. He is the way from sadness into joy. So please, don't turn away from Jesus. And now, let's profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God.
begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who is spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God knows our deepest desires and greatest needs. With trust and hope, we place our petitions before God. For the church, that we may uphold the dignity of every human life and lead others to care for the poor and the marginalized, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in our cities, that gun violence may end, justice may be achieved, and hope may be restored. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. For freedom from attachments, that God will give us the courage to live with less and embrace our families, our community members, and the gift of each day more fully. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. For children who have been abused, especially in Catholic institutions, that their voices may be heard and that future generations may be kept safe. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those participating in the Chicago Marathon, that they may be protected from injury and harm and advance in the knowledge and love of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all who are ill, that God will heal the sick, strengthen those facing a long recovery, and renew all who care for them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. God of blessing, you look upon all of your creation with love. Hear our prayers that we might serve you by protecting the weak and caring for the vulnerable. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. You have longed for sweet peace and for faith to increase and have earnestly, fervently prayed. But you cannot have rest or be perfectly blessed until all on the altar is laid. Is your all on the altar of sacrifice laid? Your heart does the Spirit control. You can only be blessed and have peace and sweet rest as you yield him your body and soul. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with these sacrificial offerings, that through these acts of devotedness, we may pass over to the glory of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, Lord of heaven and earth, through Christ our Lord. For by your word you created the world, and you govern all things in harmony. You gave us the same word made flesh as mediator, and he has spoken your words to us and called us to follow him. 
He is the way that leads us to you, the truth that sets us free, the life that fills us with gladness. Through your Son, you gather men and women whom you made for the glory of your name into one family, redeemed by the blood of the cross and signed with the seal of the Spirit. Therefore, now and for ages unending, with all the angels we proclaim your glory, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and to always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand. We proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that he has handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. By our partaking in this mystery, Almighty Father, give us life through your Spirit. Grant that we may be conformed to the image of your Son and confirm us in the bond of communion, together with Francis our Pope and Blaise our Bishop and all other bishops, priests, deacons, and ministers, and with your entire people. Grant that all the faithful of the Church looking into the signs of the times by the light of faith, may constantly devote themselves to the service of the gospel. Keep us attentive to the needs of all, that sharing their grief and pain, their joy and hope, we may faithfully bring them the good news of salvation and go forward with them along the way of your kingdom. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face 
and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. And grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the apostles and martyrs and all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. At our Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we pray as Christ's brothers and sisters, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And we share God's gift of peace with our brothers and sisters. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world have mercy on us Lamb of God you take away the sins of the world grant us peace behold the Lamb of God behold him who takes away the sins of the world Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say my word, and my soul shall be healed. We pray an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Taste and see, taste and see the glory Oh, good 
to me. Taste and see, taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Oh, taste and see, taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Let us pray. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment that comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us sharers of his divine nature, for he lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Blessed are they who are poor in spirit. Theirs is the kingdom of God. Bless us, O Lord, make us poor in spirit. Bless us, O Lord, our God. We are the light of the world. May our light shine before all that they may see the good that we do and give glory to God.